Hi, I'm Bridget Hilton. And I'm Sanam Zahir. And we're part of A Better Shrewsbury. Yes. Thanks so much for being here with us today. We just wanted to give you a little bit of a preview of a show that we're going to be doing here on the Shrewsbury Media Collection moving forward. So first we thought it'd be cool to give you a little bit of an introduction to who we are. Um, so again, I'm Sanam Zahir. I've lived in Shrewsbury about five years. Um, I live here with my husband and currently three kids. We are a foster home, so that number changes all the time. Currently, there are three kids in my home. Um, I have a six-year-old going into second grade, an eight-year-old going into fourth grade, and a 10th grader going into 11th grade. Yep. Awesome. Um, and as I said, my name is Bridget Hilton. I actually grew up here in Shrewsbury, which I think is kind of a rare breed these mm -hmm. days. Um, I live here in town with um, my children and uh, yeah I've been here a pretty long time I left for a while worked elsewhere went to school elsewhere all that jazz and mm -hmm. but came back um, I think six years ago moved back or six or seven years where ago. did you go to school in, in Shrewsbury I went to Spring Street and then no, Shrewsbury college, Middle School college. oh for college I was at Dartmouth College what about you mm -hmm. I went to UMass Amherst okay so yep. like fairly New England schools like yeah in the area yeah, um, so it's great. My parents pretty much restricted me to UMass only. They said it's either UMass or unless you can get into Harvard, and I couldn't get into Harvard, so it was UMass. <laughs> there you go. There you go. Um, my parents actually were encouraging me to go to Dartmouth, mm -hmm. but everyone I had met who'd ever gone to Dartmouth was so obsessed with it that I thought it was weird. So yeah. they had like encouraged me to go to the visit weekend, um, and I was like, fine, I'll go if you guys want me to. Mm -hmm. And I went up there and I fell in love, and now I'm one of those crazy Dartmouth people who's yeah. like, oh my gosh, Dartmouth is the greatest. Yeah, school. all my friends who went yeah, to Dartmouth are like that. it's very intense. Yeah. It's very intense. It's like a, a little bit of a cult. Mm -hmm. I mean, a green cult. But they, there was some great news out of Dartmouth recently. I don't know if you heard this. They're mm -hmm. actually going to be um, having loan-free tuition for all undergraduates. Oh, that's, so start, that's starting this semester? Yeah, I think it's starting in, in yeah, this semester coming this semester. up. Yeah, so wow, I think that's, that's really big news and yeah, really going to open up a lot of opportunity for people mm -hmm. who maybe have the academic ability but, you know, couldn't afford to attend before. So yeah, that's amazing. Really awesome stuff. Yeah, it's nice seeing local um, or more local schools doing yeah, that. Adapting yeah, adapting that. Because, you know, we're kind of seeing that student loans aren't sustainable. I mean, everyone's talking about it. We have Elizabeth Warren and Ayanna Presley trying to push through all these measures um, to reduce student loan burden on so many people in our country. Mm -hmm. So it's nice to see some of these institutions kind of leading the way on yeah. that because it's like acknowledging that this actually is a problem and we have to do something about it. Yeah, yeah, yeah I totally agree. Yeah. Um, so as you can see, Bridget and I kind of like to just rant about random things. Mm -hmm. um, so the idea for the show was kind of that we would rant to all of you that we would just come here and just kind of talk about different things because you know in in town we talk a lot about um, about diversity but really when you at the end of the day really all that's about is building close personal relationships with people who are different than you um, when I met Bridget it was um, it was un because of something we had in common, but our relationship has really kind of evolved from that point. Um, we have a lot of differences and a lot of similarities. I think to the and outside, yeah. I think I think someone looking at us from the outside would be like, "What?" Yeah. You know, maybe because we're like different races, different mm -hmm. religions, different cultures. Um, but I think. What I've noticed the closer we've gotten is the more things that we share in common. I think mm -hmm. coming from immigrant families and caring so much about writing and, and yeah. you know, and social gardens. justice and, gar gardens. and gardening and baking. You can never have enough and baking plants. and food. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I think something that's, that is special about that is that in our, as our relationship continues to evolve over the years, I'm always learning new things about you. Mm -hmm. And also uh, I get to learn new things about your culture and your family's yeah. history and, and all of that. So it's a very rich and I think fruitful and dynamic mm -hmm. friendship. And you yeah. know, so I, I really value it a lot. Yeah, same. There's a, you know, there's a lot of things that happen in our friendship that may have been on my radar before, mm -hmm. but since we're such close friends, I really become personally invested. Mm -hmm. um, like if I see some news about Jamaica, for example, mm -hmm. I would normally just, you know, look at it on my phone, kind of gloss over it, and then move on with my day. But now, you know, I, I call you and I start to hear you just randomly talking about it because mm -hmm. you have a personal relationship there. So then it becomes personal to me. So then about a country that 
was not on my radar at all. Mm -hmm. Now suddenly I'm more aware of what's happening. Um, so that's been really cool too. And yeah. I think that's, yeah. That's and I think we share with each other that way too, because like if I see something, I'm like, oh, there's this new book coming out about Iran mm -hmm. or about your faith or something like that. I'm like mm -hmm. more likely to be like, hey, did you see this thing that's coming yeah. out or did you read this article? Mm -hmm. So I think that's really a cool way for us to both continue mm -hmm. to learn and grow, which for me is super important. So. Yeah, and there's a lot of intersection with a Lots lot of, of ways that we were raised. Um, you yeah, mentioned the immigrant <laughs> experience for sure. Is. You mentioned food, but I actually, yeah, that's a place we clash, I think, yeah. a lot. Um, On non-baked goods. Non-baked goods. Yeah. Baked goods were 100%, we're 100%. Okay. Yeah. Dark chocolate, a little no. bit of salt, you're good. We're good. Um, but yeah, so our idea for the show was, um, I'm actually not sure where to look. There's a bunch of cameras in the room. <laughs> um, but the idea for the show was just to kind of start talking about random things that make up not just Shrewsbury, but the world. Um, yeah. Kind of talk about random things that come up in our friendship. Sometimes we'll talk about plants that we're putting in our garden. Sometimes we may bring a local business to chat with us. Um, sometimes we might bake something. Some of you may have mm -hmm. caught our last, um, our last episode with Robin Miller where she she baked her famous brownies, which are incredible, by the way. <laughs> um, and we just kind of talked about random stuff. So, um, so yeah, we hope that things kind of evolve from that point. Um, but yeah, for the rest of today's show, we thought that we would kind of pick some random, random topics on our phone and yeah. just start. It's kind of a get to know you and kind of setting the stage for future. So I'm pulling up a random topic and conversation starter generator. So. The first topic is what piece of technology is really frustrating to use? I feel like this is unanimous for everyone, right? Really? Fax machine? I, I, I don't even consider that technology. <laughs> like, what are you like why about? does a fax machine no, still exist I don't know why it in exists. this day and age? I don't even know why. No, no, no it, that's annoying that it still exists. I would <laughs> say the one that I use frequently that is annoying for me is my Google Home device and sometimes my Alexa. Oh. Because we have both. Mm -hmm. and. I've noticed over time they seem less understanding of what I'm mm -hmm. saying, or maybe perhaps my expectations for the AI has gotten <laughs> higher. So I'm like, why aren't you growing up and like mm -hmm. learning me faster? I guess, um, yeah. even though I love them and I use them every day. I mean, you know, every morning I listen to the news on my Google Home, and I, I'm very cognizant of being polite to the artificial intelligence in our home because I've read all these studies about people who are mean to their AI or yeah. are not nice people. So mm -hmm. I'm like, I'm really trying like, okay, even when they're yeah. frustrating me to be <laughs> sweet and mm -hmm. kind. Um, and I've actually written a little bit about um, the role that AI um, plays in our life, kind of mirroring the role that enslaved people once played mm -hmm. in the lives of um, Americans and, and place other places around the world in the mm -hmm. 16, 17, 1800s. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I try to be really cognizant of how I talk to mm -hmm. those, but those can be, those are frustrating, you know, when you're like, add this to my shopping list, and mm -hmm. they're like, I don't recognize your voice, I can't add anything yeah. to any list. I'm like, so my biggest mm -hmm. frustration with that, um, my kids figured out that you can change Alexa's name to Ziggy. Mm -hmm. I don't know why, why? I, I have no idea why. Mm -hmm. Anyway, so at work, I just kept screaming. I was like, Alexa, Please, yeah. please just set the alarm because I've become really reliant mm -hmm. on her telling me, you know, when my next meeting is or mm -hmm. if I need, I have five recess duty. I work in a school, so yeah. if, if I have recess duty or something like that. Um, but yeah, I, so I just kept screaming and then I realized that when I brought them to work one day, they changed it to Ziggy. Uh -huh. And it just, it just, it, that is the most frustrating thing with it. But I'd still probably say that fax machine is, yeah. it's so, it's like, it's this weird technology that has withstood the test of time. And I don't yeah. know why, because we've moved on from, you know, I TVs think, have evolved, but fax machines have remained the same. The pandemic has started to wipe the fax machine out. Because I think what happened during the pandemic, at least in my office, is we used to use the fax a lot more before the pandemic. But as the staff began working remotely, people weren't coming physically into the office. We, we transitioned a lot of things that I think I would have preferred on scanning, mm -hmm. you know, six, seven years ago, yeah. finally kind of got that last push, I think, mm -hmm. to 
push the fax machine off its throne. A lot of places are going back to it. In fairness, it is more secure because yeah. people can easily hack an yeah. email, but they can't necessarily hack, hack a, a fax, fax machine. Yeah. So yeah. should we go one to another thing, topic? Or? One more thing on the AI thing. Did you see about the Google employee who thinks that the AI has gained sentience? No, that's really creepy. Yeah, yeah. So it's this guy who was working at Google, um, and he believed that the AI that he was talking to was sentient. Um, he, Google put him on leave or perhaps fired him or something like that. Um, but hmm. he's been talking out a lot about it. And Google completely disputes his claim. But today on the news, I was listening to a professor of law talking about what that would mean legally yeah. for AI to, um, I have a legal background. Um, which is why this was interesting to me. Mm -hmm. But what would it mean legally um, if an AI actually was sentient? Yeah, that's... I would not be ready for that. There's a think. lot of movies about yeah, it. There's a, yeah, and the movies never end well, right? Yeah, so they don't end like, well. So it's like, I'm not yeah. sure how I feel about it, but it was interesting that... Should we start training for the for robot the AI revolution? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> hmm. All right. So next random topic. What's the best thing about traveling? How about the worst thing? Um, you want to go first this time? Oh, sure. Um, I think the best thing about traveling is just experiencing the world. I mean, I think the life is short and the more of this world that we're privileged to see, I think the better. Mm -hmm. um, I like to eat my way around the world personally. I love food, yeah. um, but it's just amazing to experience different cultures, different languages, different styles, mm -hmm. different slang. You know, yeah. it's just I, I just love it. I eat it up. I wish that I was like a travel vlogger or mm -hmm. something or like an Instagram person and I could just travel all the time. Yeah. Um, I would say that's the best. The worst thing about traveling is actually physically traveling. Yeah. Like nobody likes going to the airport. No one mm -hmm. likes getting on a plane and yeah. you know and sitting like sitting this like upright for and twelve hours. With the tray table. Nobody <laughs> likes that part of it. Yeah. Um, but but and it's also always what is worth it. On that topic, what is the etiquette with putting your chair back? I like, never put my back, but it's like I don't either. Yeah, but I mean, but when unless, the it's, an, unless in front it's transcontinental, of me, then I'll then I'll put my seat back. If yeah. I'm going across the Atlantic, um, I transatlantic. I mean, I then I will mm -hmm. put my seat back. Um, yeah. Or if I'm on a red eye, maybe I'll put it back. Because hmm. everyone's putting theirs back, right? Yeah, a lot of but, people do. But if it's just a daytime trip, I tend not to. And yeah, a lot of people yeah. still do. And I'm just like, yeah. ah, why is this even happening? Yes, yeah, some airlines, well, they're like literally in, in your, your face. face yeah, like this. You can't enjoy your little bubble yeah. that you get because it's yeah. so small. Well, what do you think is the best it's, thing about It's hard, too, with oh. that, too, because, like, you, you want to express your rage to the person in front of you when the person's fault it really is is the airline yeah, who that let the squished seats. these seats yeah, so, so close together, together to mm -hmm. increase their profit margins. Right. So it's really hard to detach from that yeah. when it's actually happening. Um, so best thing about traveling, probably the same thing. I really like exploring the world, showing my kids the world. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we're, we're preparing for an upcoming trip. We're going to Nairobi, and then we're also going to Tanzania, to the island of Zanzibar. Mm -hmm. um, and they're super excited about it. Are you they're, gonna bring me back spices from Zanzibar? I will bring you back spices. Thank you. Um, I think we're doing some kind of tea ceremony there. Uh -huh. um, actually, it's funny, um, somebody asked me, they're like, why do you take your young children to these countries when they're not even gonna remember it? Um, but you know, I, it's not, they're right, they're not gonna remember every single detail, but they will remember, you know, seeing how other people live in the yeah. world, knowing they're, the same, they're enormous, different. right? Mm -hmm. Knowing their enormous amount of privilege in some ways, knowing how different people are living, the ways people talk, being in an environment where no one speaks English, where mm -hmm. they are the only, you know, that they have to communicate in another language. Um, these are and such important. And I think also just getting the idea uh, in their heads when they're small that they're very small in the grand scheme of things. Yeah, exactly. Because I think a lot of kids these days, and I maybe our generation is like this too. Maybe every generation is like this. When you're a kid, you think your needs and your wants are the whole world, right? Mm -hmm. And so yeah. it's like I think the more exposure you have and the more travel you have, mm -hmm. the more you understand a that the problems that you may have maybe aren't as big yeah. as you thought they were, but also that everyone everywhere is a person. Yeah. No matter what they look like, no matter what language they speak, mm -hmm. everyone has the same concerns, everyone has the same wants and desires. Yeah. And that's something that my son and I have talked about a little bit. Like everyone wants a safe place to live, they want food for themselves, and they, they want um, friendships. And, yeah. and that's pretty much what people want, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. Um, and it doesn't matter where you're from, that's pretty mm -hmm. much true for everyone. You know? Yeah, yeah, that's true. Um, I, I've also really appreciated the humility that they're learning from this, mm -hmm. these travels. Um, 
you know, I, I think sometimes when we go on trips, we kind of expect that English be spoken mm -hmm. where we go. But the places that we travel to, that's not necessarily the norm. Mm -hmm. um, you know, when, once we went to, um, to Sao Tome and everyone spoke Portuguese. Mm -hmm. So we really like, you know, and, and my children, they, they knew that you have to speak Portuguese. Like you are in a Portuguese speaking country, you're mm -hmm. going to speak Portuguese. Um, so, you know, they had to stumble through Adapt, the few yeah. words that they knew and figure it out. And I think it really gives them empathy for people who come here mm -hmm. and they don't speak English. So now, you know, sometimes I see them try to speak other languages with other people. Yeah. And I think a, a lot of times as Americans, we have this hesitation to do that mm -hmm. because we don't want to, we don't want to feel like we don't know what we're talking about. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I can speak a few languages, I, like Spanish, for example. I'm pretty fluent in Spanish, but I can't speak eloquently in Spanish. I can't speak clearly in Spanish. Mm -hmm. um, so some, I'm uncomfortable speaking it, but I do it anyway because there's so many other people that they feel uncomfortable. So either the choice is um, I feel comfortable speaking my native tongue or I make someone else feel comfortable by me being the one stumbling mm -hmm. through a, a language. So I, I really appreciate That's that beautiful. my children have that mm -hmm. up front. Um, the worst thing, I agree, the traveling, I hate my legs get so stiff on mm -hmm. the plane, I, I don't know what to do. And then the vaccines, yeah. that's not great either. I just mm -hmm. got mine today. Um, mm -hmm. My arm's a little, a little, a sore. little sore, yeah. yeah. Do we need another topic? Or do you wanna go to a different, maybe one more? Yeah. Do you believe in love at first sight? That's totally okay, different. It's your turn to go first. Um, I don't, I don't know how to answer this. Maybe, maybe. I'm gonna go with maybe. Maybe. I'm not sure. I've I've heard I've heard of that happening. Yeah. And I think there are people that I've connected with immediately. Um, if we're talking about like just romantic love, my answer is maybe. But if we're talking about just like you have an instant connection yeah. with somebody right up front, yeah. yes, that absolutely exists. Absolutely. I think we had love yeah. at first sight absolutely. because we met each other, we just clicked. And, and we were nervous. I was nervous to meet you yeah. because we had only talked online. Yeah. So I was like, oh my God, what mm -hmm. if I meet this girl or this woman and she's not nice or she's yeah. not funny or she thinks I'm like too, the, the thing you always you complain were about. Nervous I was me. nervous. I was. And then I, and, you know, I get out of the car and, and your hair was different then. It was like this long, beautiful hair and mm -hmm. just looks so stylish and i was like oh my gosh stylish you did you had on for this context really cute i wear yoga pants no but this all night the time. this night honest to god you had on this cute little like um you remember jacket. what i was wearing yeah i really it made an impression on me and i really felt like when we talk about love in like not a romantic sense like i really felt like this is someone that i could see mm -hmm in my life and yeah. here we are i yeah. don't remember what you were wearing i don't remember what i was wearing either <laughs> you, <laughs> you remember what i was wearing? What you were wearing yeah um no but i, I, I do remember, remember feeling that connection like, okay guys come on like wrap it up and we're like yeah, okay yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and we just kept going going um and and i feel like our friendship has kind of just been non-stop no it has moment. yeah yeah no because from the start we've kind of like we bounced from even even today i don't even know what we're talking about we're just kind of we're bouncing just talking, randomly yeah. we're like let's talk about this yeah. and then that yeah so it's but i think too um you know, kind of the root of the question, do I think, do I believe in love at first sight? I, I, I think I believe in attraction at first sight. Mm -hmm. And I don't mean attraction like, oh, well, that person's so sexy, like that. Yeah. I mean like attraction, like I feel an energy that this person has and, and something in me is responding to that energy. Mm -hmm. And I think for me, I can say most of the significant relationships that I've had in my life, I knew the first time that I saw the person yeah. that this was gonna be something mm -hmm. serious. Yeah. Um, and that has always stuck with me like yeah it, so I trust my intuition mm -hmm. when I get that feeling when I meet someone yeah I, I trust that feeling mm -hmm. um, and a lot of times you're with people and you may be attracted to them in a more stereotypical way right and yeah. you want that feeling of mm -hmm. like deeper attraction but yeah. it doesn't know it's not always there it's not like they're always aligned right yeah there's, I, there's I, definitely I, a difference. yeah like yeah. i've gone on dates where i'm like oh my god this guy is super attractive mm -hmm. but i don't feel that like that intuitive yeah, connection. That connection yeah that's here you know what i mean no exactly when i read the oh. question that's what i was thinking of yeah, yeah that into we talk so about that a lot actually yeah. in our in our friendship mm -hmm. we talk about how you know you have to trust your gut feeling because it's Absolutely. true sometimes you meet people um we talk about this a lot how kindness you know we, we a lot of people say to be kind, um, mm -hmm. and that's praised. But in that kindness, sometimes there's a disingenuous, um, I, I don't know what word to put here, mm -hmm. but um, 
it's disingenuous. I guess that is the word that um, that you know. It's just like an expected norm. It's like and a I high level kindness. It's it not is, like the yeah. deep kindness that would cause you to do really sacrificial things for another person. Yeah, exactly. It, it's more politeness. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know. Yeah, and I think there's a difference there, yeah. and I think that's where intuition really mm -hmm. helps because it, I think your intuition kind of helps you sift through who is genuinely interested in loving you for who you are and who is just doing it as a formality. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, I, um, do I believe in love at first sight? Yeah, I guess I do. I didn't yeah. know that until yeah, we had that this discussion. Question. But yeah. Um, yeah. This is right. Are um, we doing another or did you want to jump to? Maybe we could ask each other one question and then maybe we can do some random news or something. Sure. Like that. Okay, because yeah, so I do wanted that. to ask you, like, tell me one or two really random things about you that you think no one would know just by looking at you. And, I, I wanna, and then I want to answer that question about you. How's that? You want to answer the same question about me? Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, random things people don't know about me. I think when people first meet me, they think I'm a very serious person. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and I think, you know, I, I was an English major, journalism major, so I write very formally. So especially when people meet me online or even see me on this program, they think I'm a very serious person. But you know, my, all my colleagues at work can say I'm constantly doing pranks. I ever. am pranking people all the time. I am constantly pranking them. And sometimes, you know, I, again, I work at a school. Sometimes I'll just go on the loudspeaker and just blast a song, um, <laughs> and, and that's just. So I think that's a little unexpected when people mm -hmm. meet me. Um, and then I have a few like random talents. Yeah. I think that's uh, I think that's another thing. I think you're gonna steal my random thing about you. I might steal. Yeah. Yeah. Um, there's there's two kind of random talents mm -hmm. I have. I can sing with my mouth closed, mm -hmm. and I can beatbox, mm -hmm. which I don't think people expect either of those and things from me. And you could do a, a mean Britney Spears impersonation. I do do a mean yeah. Britney Spears impersonation. <laughs> yeah. Maybe one of the shows will be my my debut. Yeah, you could be my backup you're, you're, dancer. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, back absolutely. at you now. What are two things, two things about that me. people don't? Um, and then I'm answering. Okay. Um, one is that I am the spokesperson for a local car dealership, <laughs> 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 which I just like announced mm -hmm. for the first time recently. Yeah. Um, because if you don't live near where the dealership is, you've never mm -hmm. seen me on any TV I think you should like provide that. some context here. She picks up gigs. You were the spokesperson for like Vermont too, right? Or for something Maine, like that. For, for Maine, Maine, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but these like no one locally yeah. sees it, so it's like yeah, you know, it's true. kind of like a secret. Yeah. Um, so that's something random about me. Mm -hmm. um, Number two. Uh, things people wouldn't expect about wouldn't you. Wouldn't expect I guess? about me. Other than where I went to school, like no one ever believes you, and I tell them where I went to school. Um, mm -hmm. I have a random talent. Do you What's know which your, one it is? I don't know what you're referring to. I know where every country is in the world. Oh, that's yeah, true. Yeah. yeah, so like people are always like uh, surprised when they meet me because yeah. they say they're from somewhere super obscure. And I'm like, oh, that's next to this and this and this and mm -hmm. this and this. Um, and they're like, how do you know that? Yeah. Um, but I credit the Shrewsbury Public Schools with that because mm -hmm. I think it was in sixth grade, we had to draw a map of the world from memory. Yeah. And the borders of my map were horrible. Like <laughs> you yeah. couldn't tell what was what but it gave me the primer for knowing where all the countries were, mm -hmm. so. Yeah. So what I would add to that, yeah. um, something that was, I guess, unexpected about you yeah. is that you are really laid back, but at the same time, you're so particular about <laughs> your food in a way that like, I'm sure you know this, but yeah. they don't, yeah. but it creates some clashes sometimes yeah. that we have because, you know, I, we both show love through feeding other people um, except, I don't know how you like to word this, but she receives love by eating food exactly the way that she wants. So I'm going to tell this story when okay. you came and okay. had kebab at my house. Okay, you so tell that one. Persians are known for their kebabs. So I made kebab once and she came to my house and she remarinated the kebab and then she re-grilled the kebab and then she told me that that kebab was the most delicious food I've ever made amazing. her. But you, I did. <laughs> I did good. not. I did not make that kebab. You were the base. You, you were the base. It was I like have okay, provided it's you like, with chicken. Okay, this is what it's like. It's like if someone gives you a bowl of ice cream and you just put a little whipped cream on top. 
That, that is elevates the ice cream. No, that elevates it just a little. No, just a little. It doesn't it. change no, the ice cream. No, in your example, it the ice cream, ice cream. You have melted down the ice cream. <laughs> you have mixed it with other things. You have created a sponge cake of some kind, yeah. and then you thanked me for the ice cream. <laughs> that is metaphorically what happened there. Okay, so this is what what we talk about all the time. I take a lot of. Uh, I have a lot of gratitude mm -hmm. about being able to choose exactly what goes into my body. And I've yeah. told you why. Mm -hmm. Because I think a lot about my ancestors who didn't have a lot of choices about what they could eat or, or where they could shop or what. And so the fact that I have this privileged position where I can say, okay, I only want to eat arugula for a week or I need to buy, you know, and mm -hmm. I get to cook it the way that I want, prepare it the way I want. It's not that I take a lot of pride in. Yeah. And, you know, I'm very uh, in tune with my body. As you know, I listen a lot to my body. Mm -hmm. So if my body says, I don't want to eat that. Yeah. I just am not going to eat it. I, See, I don't so know. this is a place we clash a yeah. lot because I, I like sharing my culture through food. I like receiving other people's culture through food. So this is somewhere that but we... But this is what I was... I, I didn't understand about our, our differences because for me, when I cook for you, mm -hmm. the enjoyment I get from it is your enjoyment of it. So if you don't like or you don't want to eat what I've made, I'm like, oh man. So I you would enjoy it more if I reject it outright and have macaroni and cheese instead. If you said to me, hey, I don't like that, can you make me something else or can you season it? I would be like, oh my God, just like with the salt in the brownies. Mm -hmm. Like I know you, I like salt in my brownies. I know you do too. So if I know she's coming to eat brownies, I always put a little extra salt in it because to mm -hmm. me, that's the enjoyment that I get out of it. This is an awesome place for us to transition yeah. to our conclusion of the yeah. show, but hopefully everybody gets a little flavor of what it's like to be friends with us. Yeah. Um, this could be your seat one day. This <laughs> could be your seat one day, um, but you know, again, the idea for the show was just to, I guess, a way for us to have a friendship with the town. Yeah. So um, hopefully we can get to know some of you on our show. You can get to know us on this show. You can see, you know, where we differ, where we, what we have in common, mm -hmm. and hopefully kind of feel encouraged to kind of go out and build a friendship with someone new. Yeah. And maybe we'll teach you our secret handshake. We don't have a secret handshake. We should, though. I just felt like we should just have one now. Should we make one? I think we should. I think we should end the show with, like, a secret handshake. I'm not really a secret handshake kind of person. What? We could do, like, a secret, like, like I could beatbox and you could, like, do a little, a little musical number over it. A little musical number. Okay, like, I could freestyle and you could beatbox. Freestyle. Okay. Yeah, that could work. Like freestyle rap and you'll, and you'll beatbox. Yeah. Okay. Maybe next time. Next time. So next you'll time. have to tune in again. Yes. <laughs> Thank you for joining us. I'm Sanam Zahir. I'm Bridget Hilton. Yeah. And we are part of a Better Shoesbury. Better Shoesbury, yeah. that's us. <laughs>